if I'm going to make bold declarative statements that are going to be proven wrong, uh-huh. right now we're going to bring Sean Shapiro on the show. Yes. And I'm going to say that now the Stars can't win this series. What? Your thoughts, Sean? <laughs> uh, I, I disagree with that. I, I, okay. Yeah, I, I, this, this is this is very much a. It, it's kind of funny. It's stars. Stars cracking game one felt very much like stars wow. Minnesota game one. Yeah, very very much that way. Where how if Dallas had won game one in the Minnesota series after Minnesota had kind of thrown everything they had and still couldn't beat Dallas handedly you kind of you almost had a message set that it was going to be a long series for Minnesota. I om- different slight differences obviously with Seattle than Minnesota and they're playing and they come with a different and there are of course things the long series but I come out of game 1 where you're down 4-2 at the end of the first period a lot of times that could just be a wash and be a nothing game and you flush it and move on instead Dallas didn't and just kind of kind of sent a message that the rest of the series is still completely there for the taking like i picked dallas before the series and i'm and that decision in my mind hadn't changed after game one i know i know a lot of times sports will not necessarily lend itself to the magical ending that you want but do you think i'm a chump at all for thinking that joe pavelski was for sure going to score the overtime game winner to mark this down as one of the most amazing games in the history of playoff hockey no, no. I mean, we all thought it, right? Like we're all going into overtime. We're all going into overtime, thinking like, okay, what else? Every time it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of, it was like almost like a. Every time he touched the puck, you're like, oh, right, this is this is number five now. Like it's three, three is ridiculous, four is insanity, and and then all of a sudden you've convinced yourself that five is now that's just natural, right? <laughs> Oh, for sure. That's what I thought. Plus, he won all his face-offs, and I was like, he's going to win the face-off, keep the puck, and score the goal, and I'm going to freak out. What's up, Sean? Hey, Sean, this is Derek. (laughs) Sorry, I had to interrupt there. Uh, What do you feel about the the Kraken being obviously a lot quicker and physical, I feel like, after seeing game one, the way it especially started? Do you feel like the Stars are going to bounce back into this with game two and put uh, a little more or be a little more physical with the Kraken? Yeah, I think there's last night, and this is just a perfect example of how good Miro Heishkin it is. The Stars defenseman, the one that the only one that really adjusted well from Game Six against Minnesota to Game One against Seattle, was Miro. Miro was was great. The Stars won the game when he was on the ice, but um, a bunch of the other Stars defensemen, Nessa Lindell, um, Yanni Hockenpah, even though Hockenpah had the assist on the fourth Velsky goal, they, they kind of struggled going with the speed and dealing with the, the forecheck that that Seattle brought against them. And it was like, it's kind of like going from playing six games against six games playing in the slow lane and the way Minnesota forechecked to jumping onto the freeway without any transition time at all. And I think. So game one was kind of that space where the rest of the Stars' defense, aside from Miro, kind of got caught thinking and still trying playing in a way that they played against Minnesota. So I think there's an adjustment there for Dallas um, to deal with Seattle's speed and the way they bring physicality. And aside from that, it's there's some other small adjustments, but that's really the biggest thing. Can you? Miro did his job. The Stars won when he was on the ice. Can the rest of the Stars defensemen in the half of the game he's not on the ice, can they adjust? So, Yeah, and with that, you, you talk about adjustments and everything. What about the adjustments of trying to get Robertson more involved? Because obviously we saw with what the Wild did to him, keeping him contained, uh, and obviously starting off, I know yeah. it's game one, but they contain yeah. Robertson and our other big guys, Sagan uh, and Ben mm-hmm. as well. Is there any adjustments you see going forward with that? Yeah, Robertson is the big – is the – the, the big question, or if you want to use, if you want to put a concern on on a forward, it's, it's Robertson because on a on a night when Joe Pavelski scores four goals, you you don't want to waste that, right? Like he, like if if Jason has if Jason Robertson regular season game, the Stars win that game five four last night, and I think you can. It's one of two ways you try to figure it out. One one issue with Robertson is he hasn't been the same since Pavelski got hurt, and he hasn't played with Pavelski, but 
obviously Pavelski had such a great game with Max Domi and Mason Marchman last night. How can you not play him on that line? And so it becomes a little bit of a coaching challenge here for Pete DeBoer to figure out how do you how do you get Jason Robertson to figure it out on his own? Because you don't want to take you, – you, you can't split up a line that just scored four goals. You're not going to do that. But you need Robertson to kind of – Acts like the Jason Robertson, who had 109, 108 points, whatever it was in the regular season, and this is the reason he the reason he held out before the season and 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 wanted the bigger deal. This is what you're getting paid for. So, I think a lot of this becomes if the stars are going to go deep, they need Jason Robertson to show up, and they haven't. He hasn't been the stars haven't been as haven't been critical on him because it's been easy because it's been easy to give the excuse that Pavelski's not there, but if you want to be a guy who's getting MVP votes and Robertson will get a couple this year, you got to show up in the playoffs. And that's really honestly what it boils down to me because you look at that other line, the, the Ben line with Johnston and dad and all, why Johnson almost ended the game twice in regulation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that, that kid's 19 and he's showing up in the playoffs. So I, I put this more on the player than the coaching where Jason Robertson needs to show up. And this is why you, you went and got paid and this is why you're going to get MVP votes. So you need to show it in the playoffs. Not to be lost in the Pavelski extravaganza, how good was Max Domi in terms of moving the puck and facilitating last night? Oh, he was great. I mean, the one question with Domi has been since the Stars traded for him, we knew the puck movement was something that was that was going to be a skill and something he'd bring to this team and everything. But he kind of had kind of struggled a little bit to find the right fits just after in, in March. Ironically enough, going back to the game in March when in Seattle, Mason Marchment got hurt and they asked Domi to do some things more defensively and everything like that. And even in the last round with Pavelski being hurt, he was asked to do some more things defensively. And when the Stars basically were able to move Ty Delandria down in the lineup and and Max Domi's kind of defensive responsibility shifted to a little bit less, he was able to be the Max Domi that Jim Neal went and traded for at the deadline. He's He's great at moving the puck in transition. He's great at picking apart seams. Um, I loved the uh, the little play that when he, it's it's it, it's it's I mean it's impressive on the first couple ones, but to set up Yanni Hockenbach, who is not the fleetest of foot on essentially an area <laughs> go past, yeah. is is that's that's an impressive that's an impressive little play that I'm that that kind of gets understated because obviously Pavelski's tip and. Uh, uh, Bunting it home is is the one that we all see, but just the highlight to get to to to, to cue that up and the space to pick that apart. That's that's a great play by Domi. I mean, he's been really he he was clearly I think the stars really unlocked something with him last night. Now that they were healthy and he could be used the way they wanted to when they traded for him, and he wasn't being asked to do some things that frankly he can't do. He's like any hockey player; he's got his flaws. The Stars were asking him to do some stuff defensively that he's not great at, and he allowed it to get into some of his other parts of his game. And last night we saw what happens when he is kind of used properly. Uh, Sean Shapiro on with us right now on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. You can hear him on the Spits and Suds podcast on 105.3thefan.com and your Odyssey app. And see, I really like him, this uh-huh. guy. Yeah. I don't care for the other person. Yeah, that guy's that a little. Show. You know, know that other guy, He's Sean? different. He's different he's, for he's sure. He's fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, Sean, Sean the, with, uh, with, with every time we start to go, man, is Otter a little leaky? Is there a little oh, something here? Man. Then he comes back and like shows us why he is who he is. Like I, I guess you know, what were you seeing? Was it just the stuff in front of him last night, or I mean, he had a moment where he wasn't even ready for for everything. Yeah, he, I didn't like the first period. Uh, obviously, I mean, that's yeah, far from rocket science. It's four goals. <laughs> I would hope not. I would <laughs> hope too. not, Sean. I, I would not a fan yeah, of that. First I, I also, I also, even the second period, he was a little bit shaky in the second period too. Obviously, yeah. there's no goals there, but it's still a little bit. And then there was a moment for me in the. Uh, in the third period where he kind of hit the reset switch where there was there was a bit of a, of a rough rebound and then he made the glove save and Jake's Jake's got a bit of like the he's got that ship he's got a bit of that like I'm the bad guy swagger to him okay. and so right. when, when he's playing well and 
there's there's a moment where and he's making and he, if you're watching Jake Ottinger and he's making a glove save and he's just flipping the puck back at the forward or flipping it back at, to the ref like just so nonchalantly. Those are the moments where he's dialed in. And there was a moment in that in the third period, he makes a glove save through traffic, and he just kind of and it's and he does that. And it's one of those where you hadn't seen that in his motions and his body for the first 45 minutes or whatever it was. And overtime goal, it's a bit of a wonky one. I'm, I'm sure he'll overly break it down. But for me, Ottinger corrected in the third period, and I would expect to see the version of Jake Ottinger we expect going forward in game two, game two tomorrow night. It's, he's, got a, he's got a great bounce back to him. He, we saw it in this in the Minnesota series. It was after the uh, after, after he struggled a little bit in the Minnesota series, he completely turned it on. So I, I'm not really worried about Jake Ottinger here. Um, it's I as long as you're making the as long as you're making the adjustment early in the series and not late, like <laughs> and not falling apart late. I think I think the Stars will be fine. What was your last thing for you? What was your prediction yeah. before the series? And you said you're like steadfast. Are you keeping it where you had it? Yeah, I picked Dallas and six, um, and I'm and I'm still I'm mm. still going with that. I'm still going with Dallas and six on this one. I think um, I I just look at the stars. I think the stars will adjust. I think one of the easiest games to one of the easiest games to steal for a road team in a, in a playoff series is game one, because it's the game where you get to come in and everything's all content and easy and comfortable for Dallas. And you get to come in and you're different from the last round and you can really upset, upset things and, 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 and really kind of bother, be a little bit more effective in, in upsetting everything. And I think that's honestly, you, Game one was going to be, if Seattle was going to win the game in Dallas, game one was probably be the game I would pick. So it doesn't really change my pick. Um, I think the Stars also have a coaching staff now that makes adjustments, frankly. Yeah. I think in the past yes. there, was a, there was a lot of time where it was, all right, well, we, we lost. Like, I actually, one of the things I loved that the Stars coaching staff did from a schematically, like, you were willing to make changes is, I love that Colin Miller played last night because so often, and Colin Miller hadn't played game six or five against uh, Minnesota because Tom, uh, Joel Hanley had come in and everything like that. And But so often the ethos in hockey is you win the game and because we won, we won't make any changes. I, I love that the coaching staff was like, okay, we won, but we can make changes because we know Colin Miller is a better puck mover and is more mobile than Joel Hanley and we can do this. Like I, I thought there's, there's the fact that Pete DeBoer and his staff are now – more willing to adjust and do that. That's that's why this team can, and I still think will win the series. Well, that's why I think too with with Ottinger, how he always bounces back. And I'm not trying to say too much on it because I'm very superstitious. But the way that he is <laughs> after a loss is huge, and I think that tonight or tomorrow is going to be definitely a statement. I mean, it's a must win in my opinion because we're obviously going to Seattle after that. So you got to mm-hmm. get the dub. I think the Stars will definitely come out really hot. They saw how it was at the beginning of the first with the Kraken yesterday. I think they're going to make a statement. I see the Stars winning that one, but I also – I got the Stars in six. Okay, and I've heard a rumor. I don't know if this is true. If you buy the new book, We Win Here, <laughs> or listen to the Spits and Suds podcast, that pretty much guarantees a victory in this series. Have you heard that rumor? I, I, I've, I've, heard that, I've heard that rumor. You should definitely download, you should definitely, uh, download Spits and Suds. We've got uh, – We've been doing shows right after each game. It's, in, it's fresh for you in the morning after each game or if you're up late. And uh, then also uh, check out the book. Uh, we got a good, easy URL for it, wewinhere.com. It's uh, about the Texas Stars, but also has some great stories in there that connects to, we talked about Jake Ottinger, how honestly one of the reasons that Jake Ottinger was able to really soar with Dallas was they needed Jack Campbell to fall apart like he did. So we covered a lot of fun <laughs> We cover a lot of fun stuff like that, so check that out, too.